your conference this evening. <laughs> well, sorry, Europe. <laughs> no, no, it's good, it's good. So we're now live on YouTube, just so that everyone knows. Welcome, live listeners. I'll give you an introduction in a moment. We're just going to wait another minute or two for more of the project partners and, and participants to enter the Zoom space. Hi, Becky. Hi, Ivona. Hello. <laughs> morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Hi, Yuri. All right, as we, as we gradually grow, uh, just going to look to see if Barbara is still in the frame. I do not see her there anymore. We just had um, a quick little introduction um, from the new director of the museum in Bassano for the new ones that are entering. I don't see her in the frame anymore. I think she already had to step out because of... Uh, the, she moved to Pisano this week and has to close the museum already tomorrow. So uh, yes, she's there. Is I don't see you anymore, Barbara. <laughs> There's too many faces on the screen anymore uh, now. Um, so I there, now I see you, Barbara. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So now I think we're a fuller uh, group if you just want to say another quick hello to everyone <laughs> so that everyone knows uh, who you are and that you've just landed and welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for this invitation. Uh, just to, to introduce myself, I, uh, I'm Barbara Guidi. Um, Monica told you that I'm just arrived in Bassano. I'm very glad, very happy to be here and to take uh, up the position of director uh, in, the, in the museums of the city. Uh, museums that uh, are very involved in uh, this work with the, the project Dancing Museum, about which uh, um, I, I didn't have the, the chance to, to, to know very much, but uh, um, about which I'm very happy that Bassano hosts this, uh, this project. Uh, I'm just arrived. I'm very, uh, I look forward to uh, see you at work uh, in, uh, in the space of the museums of Bassano. And uh, I, be, I wish you every uh, success and uh, all the best for uh, your beautiful uh, work. Thank you so much. We're happy you could join us for these first few moments. And um, for those of you who are listening either in the Zoom room or on the live stream on YouTube, um, good morning. My name is Monica Gillette and I'm gonna guide us in conversation this morning. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, you're landing inside of the Dancing Museums project, which you can see is full of many faces. Um, the, the topic for today is going to be arts, education, and learning by doing. Um, this week's activities are being hosted by our partners in Barcelona, who you will meet directly in a moment. Um, and as Barcelona is where we were supposed to, all these faces in the screen that you're seeing that we were supposed to be meeting today in Barcelona this week, um, as that could not happen, we've quickly switched to some online formats. Um, so a little bit about our structure for today. Um, the, within this project, each time we are physically or virtually moving to a new partner city, we have the chance to engage with the ecology and thematic passions of that locality. In the last few days while preparing this session, I had the chance to listen and hear how important the topic of arts and education is for the Barcelona partners. So now we're going to move over to Veronique from Fundacio Miro and then Sonia Fernandez at Mercat de les Flos and learn more about the Barcelona context. And then we'll move into conversation with some of our partners. So I will pass it now over to Veronique. Hello. Hello everybody. My name is Veronique Dupas 
from the Public Program Department at the Fondation Jean Milo. Um, I will speak on behalf of our Education Department who cannot attend this meeting, and I will try to give you a generic uh, vision of our education activities with the following notes. So I will read. Uh, the aim of uh, Jean Miro when he created the Fondation was to start a center for study of contemporary art, not just a center for research and knowledge of his own production. The philosophy of the museum goes in that direction and wants to generate a dialogue between contemporary art and the works of Jean Miro. The education program of the museum is based on three main areas. The Joan Miro collection, temporary exhibition, and the Space 13 exhibition. I want to, uh, only to add that Space 13 is a space devoted to emerging art projects. And since 1978, its ongoing programming has made of the space, Space 13, a unique platform, an open space for new generations. Uh, the museum's education program includes a variety of activities and experiences related to these three main areas, and also the park and the neighborhood around the museum. And our activities are all aimed at engaging visitors' interests and facilitating a connection, a personal connection with art, while also contributing to social interaction and shared learning. Uh, over the last years, the Foundation has been collaborating closely with schools in our neighborhood, implementing educational practices that encourage a variety of working methods and stress the importance of the artistic process for all areas of learning. And all these projects uh, have been jointly conceived and approved but the school's teaching staff and the education department in an effort to engage families and to reinforce a sense of belonging to a neighborhood in which we all either work or live. And it's important also to point out that these projects are made in the spirit of co-creation. Co and we want also to highlight that we have the desire to create a community with the schools and family students to create a space for caring, cooperating and sharing. In addition of all those um, school projects and family projects, we participate in a citywide program called In Residence. In Residence is a program organized by the Institute of Culture and the Barcelona Education Consortium in collaboration with different cultural agents. It introduces contemporary art into state-funded secondary schools in Barcelona by establishing direct contact between an artist and the students during all an academic year. The aim is that the artist should create a piece of work together with a group of students who will participate in its conception and completion over the course. Then regarding the Space 13, our Emerging Artists program, we have developed an art education project called Gravitations. This project aims to involve 16 years old art students with, with contemporary art. And it consists of a series of activities related with the Space 13 program. And how the department in this project meets with the students at the museum once a month and visits the current exhibition with the artists being shown in the creator. All the works produced by the students during the course are included in the final exhibition at the museum. And all the works are inspired by these uh, visits to the museum in conversation with the artist and the creator. And this project is a real opportunity for the student to exhibit their works publicly for the first time in a museum. So this is a summary of our current program, and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Veronique. Um, 
before we shift over to Sonia, uh, I thought it might be a good idea that we organize or do a little choreography of the screen for a moment. Um, so as we shift to Sonia, perhaps everyone else can turn their cameras off so we can better focus on, on the person that's speaking. And then I'll call cameras back in and out as we continue in the conversation. Thanks, everyone. I'll stay with you, Sonia. <laughs> Okay, thanks very much. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, nice to meet you through this screen. To, through the screen. But um, I think this is a really good opportunity to meet. In spite, we are not here in Barcelona. That's a really shame. I hope we can do it that in the future. Okay, I'm gonna to introduce uh, myself and what we do in the educational department here in Barcelona. I work in the educational department, but I do not work alone. I work with two main colleagues that they are around here as well, through the screens. I work with Montserrat Ismael and Judith Bombardo. And I think we are really uh, a team together and how we think education and how we develop our programs. Montserrat, uh, Montserrat, she's an expert in, she's a teacher, she's a teacher and she's a dance pedagogue. And Judith Bombardo, she's in the head of the Department of Cultural Action and Education. I think the three of us, we work really together. And Judith, she has a really long trajectory in dance management and production in, in the city of Barcelona for more than over 30 years. Uh, I have a different profile. I'm a choreographer and came more for artistic field and I have been developed, developing projects in Barcelona related performing arts, territory and research. I think that's important for me to introduce how we think about education because we are really, uh, we have a lot of different kind of profiles on how we think dance and how we approach to dance. And I think that makes us be really all the time really awake and really contrast, contrast, contrast ideas and sharing different ways of thinking dance and discussing a lot. And sometimes also we yeah, argue to me also a lot. But I think this, uh, that makes us um, be really, um, have a, a really lively conversation about our, the projects we coordinate. We share all the time how we think uh, how we feel about uh, what we do. And I think this is the first statement of our work and thinking about this learning by doing. I think that's the first step for us. We are not alone. We work on the, we are, we are like a skeleton inside Mercat of the content department, the, the main program. There is also, we, we work really together with Marco Olive that is also around here and our director, Angels Margarit, uh, that she's a, real, a, a huge trajectory here in Barcelona as a choreographer and a pedagogue. And we are like an organic system and education for us is a, a structural component of our thinking, uh, dance and what we do in, our, in the theater at the end. We work like uh, four main uh, concepts, I can say. We work around education about performing about four concepts, it can be exhibition, um, education, um, cre um, creation and process, and reflection and theory. I think we have these four concepts, and we try to, and in the center of these four uh, ideas is the mediation we do, the mediation and dissemination. I think there is in, this, in the center and around it. I think they have, we have these four concepts, and around we work as a mediation as a, uh, like a bridge to our territory all the time in a constant thinking of how we can uh, develop our audiences. Um, we think our audiences between zero and 99, and we try to develop uh, all these four concepts in our open different possibilities of activities in a very open concept of dance to all of them. To make like an attractive program uh, but it's not just a performance, can be lectures, can be practical things, can be an open rehearsal, can be like trying to all the time uh, focus on what we can offer to our audience, uh, to a kid or to an adult. We don't think different uh, to a kid to an adult. We try to develop uh, the, the program thinking like uh, um, 
a whole audience together. We don't make difference. And I think that's a really important thing for us because um, it makes like a, a, a really important aim or goal how we think education. At the end, from, at least for me, education is all around us because we are in a constant process of sharing and learning uh, inside the market and outside the market. But if we, we focus on zero 19 years old, the programs we do specifically specific for education, we really uh, work with our okay. education. We really work with our education, educa educational community with exhibition, artistic practical, and the, uh, to put artistic practical and process inside the classroom and the training to our, our entire educational community that can be the teachers, can be the family. During our trajectory, we have been developing a lot of programs that combine these three, these three things together. Uh, we work also um, in, the, in the project of in residence, also as Fundacion Miro, that is a really important project here in the city. This to high school, but also we, uh, we think about exhibition, artistic practical inside the classroom and training the, from kindergarten to high school. We develop different kinds of projects by in the whole uh, scholarship. And I think that's really, uh, um, this is a focus of Mercat. This is a really innovative uh, activity that we do, like thinking in a whole community, like really a huge spectrum and to see, um, also to do that, I think it's basic for us to be in a constant dialogue with the teachers and to the artists. We don't do that ourselves. <laughs> we do that as a team, a huge team inside the market, but outside we are surrounded by a huge amount of collaborators to do that. Um, artists, uh, um, theor dance theorists, a lot of kind of different person related with pedagogue and teachers. Um, we really work like in a really open dialogue with our territory and the people that isn't have an expertise on all these fields. And also uh, with a lot of institutions as well. We are a public theater. I think that uh, we have an aim of really respond to our society, but we are to develop this project, we really collaborate with the with institutions here, the police institution here in, here in Barcelona. Also, we don't only focus here in Barcelona, we develop some projects in the Catalan, in the Catalan view, not just here in Barcelona, but all the whole Catalan state. And I think as we work with Montserrat, Judith, Mark uh, and Angels in our content department, as a continuous sharing of ideas with these collaborators, we are all the time sharing, all the time discussing, all the time listening, all the time observing how the others are working. And this has make us feel really all the time active with our society, our territory, our, our community around us. And that's a thing that is a really um, important fo point for us to work, work at work. But, but because at the end our mission, um, is to open new ways of, our, of raising awareness about at the school about dance, um, different ways of dance, different ways of thinking body, different ways of thinking movement. And we try to do that, putting the, practic the artistic practice inside the school through the experience to, to the doing, doing the, putting the practical there and in a constant dialogue with teachers and, and, and creators, choreographers. When we start to think our um, the developing to develop develop our season program like two or three years before it happens, uh, we 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 work uh, we start working how an artist how a kind of uh, aesthetic a kind of format that can be related with our educational community. Sometimes we respond to uh, what the audience within they need or they demand. And in other ways, sometimes we impact with something, with a format, with aesthetic, with a creator, or with, with a choreographer and never work with uh, kids, perhaps inside the school. We work like in a different way. Sometimes uh, it's the audience will listen to the demands or what we think they need, and sometimes we, can, we, we want to impact with something. And to do that, we really accompany a lot 
uh, how we do that to our teachers and to our educational communities. It's like a way of strategic thinking on how we do the things. So, uh, we work in a different ways and to, um, to offer different ways of thinking dance, different ways of related with movement in the schools or different ways of having experience through, through a performance as well. We try to move like in a, in a constant dialogue from inside us to outside and to outside to inside the house. And I think we can do that because education is, a, is as I said before, it's a skeleton, it's a structural line of what we do. It's like something that is really in the middle and around that, our container of programs are, are constantly moving. I'm constantly reacting, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly making mistakes. Some of them uh, sometimes are successful or not, with our territory, with our communities. We are in a constant dialogue with the scenes outside Mercat and inside us. Um, I think, um, like Montserrat always says, there is no a recipe book of what we do. I think more than talk about projects, I, want, I wanted to share like this constant fluent movement that we work because that is our learning at the end. That's how we think education in a constant movement. This is a motion that never stops. And there's a recipe book. We want sometimes, I think we offer like different kinds of ingredients to our audiences, to our educational community, but we're not gonna make the soup. Okay, and this season we go with these ingredients. The other one we go with like what? And everyone can, uh, can be uh, making their own recipe, but there's no methodology. I think we are like in, it's like we are an ecosystem. There are different habitats inside us and we are all trying, trying to look like, with the mediation and equilibrium to our, eco, our ecosystem inside Mercado, inside Mercado responds to, to dance, to the dance sector. At the end, our commitment is to dance communities to our educational community, to our audience. I think these days uh, everything is changing so fast. We are on the time rethinking how we can keep offering this thinking, this thought to our audiences more than a pandemic moment that sometimes is impossible to share dance together in a theater. Um, we are at the time trying to rethinking how to do that with this commitment to our communities and to our artist sector, but because educational is something that is uh, inside us, like an organic and a skeleton of the Mercat project is. Thank you so much, Sonia. I, I love that you're using body parts and skeletons <laughs> to, and clearly you're a dancer describing uh, everything, how this, this department lives inside of the institution and really truly is living and constantly adapting. It's wonderful. Um, it's, it's great to hear uh, the context of our hosts in Barcelona because we can't be there in person. So you made it very vivid for us. Um, now I would like to introduce uh, the guests that we're gonna have for the continuation of the conversation. All, most of who are coming um, directly from the partners inside of Dancing Museum, but we also have a guest institution coming from Oslo. And I'm gonna ask each of you to turn your um, cameras on now. So if, uh, uh, Stephanie and Irish uh, from France and Greta and so uh, Sonia we already have and Jens and Birgit and Nina the Oslo team sorry the everyone was confusing um, I would like uh, that everyone's going to be speaking in the next um, bit for the conversation so the names that I just said so nice to see some of your Ingrid Anna hello and um, quick goodbye again thank you <laughs> the choreography of the cameras will be a theme throughout today um, so yes, now we're going to hear directly from the people that will be speaking um, in conversation in the next, um, I'd say, hour and a half. Um, and I would like to ask each of you kind of institution by institution, which I think um, Stephanie and Irish might be a little tricky because you're in two different um, rooms there. But uh, if we could take about three minutes to hear from who you are and from what context you're speaking from. Um, that would be great. So let's start first with uh, Stephanie and Irish in Paris. Can you introduce yourselves and share with us your context? Uh, 
Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Um, so I'm Stéphanie Hero. Uh, I work at the MAGVAL, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Vitry-sur-Seine, uh, which is close to La Brigetterie uh, and in the south of Paris. I'm uh, the head... Um, um, oh, my phone. Uh, I'm the um, uh, uh, director of the uh, cultural and uh, educational programs of the MAGVAL since um, uh, the opening of the museum. Um, that is mean uh, in um, since uh, 16 years. Um, and I work and do not work alone like Sonia, uh, I work with a team, um, a team composed of 12 people, um, guides and, um, um, and oh, excuse me, my phone, it's a museum which called me, uh, guides and um, um, different people like Iris, which uh, will speak uh, with me. Um, she's artist, she's dancer and guide also, uh, historian of art. And I, I am historian of art. And um, I, the Magval, is, um, is, would have been created by the Departmental Council of Val de Marne. It's a departmental um, uh, close to the left camp, uh, communism camp. We can say that because it's important. We are not a political museum. We are not uh, forced to do um, these, uh, those programs, but the ideology and the history of this uh, camp and this um, philosophy um, lead, uh, leads us to uh, put artistic um, uh, pro project and artist and creation uh, at the core of our educational program. And I will detail that uh, after. Irish, can you just introduce yourself and uh, maybe anything you might want to add? <laughs> well, uh, hi, I'm Iris or Irish, <laughs> it depends on you, as you wish. So I'm working at Magvau uh, since uh, now, maybe 2018. Uh, and uh, I proposed a visit and also not only the classic visit, but uh, maybe an uh, important thing to say is that uh, I am free to create, to invent new ways of uh, being in the museum. So do, maybe this is a, a good way to introduce, like I, I can do things over there uh, with dance, uh, with, uh, with new ways to think how to uh, put together work and learning by doing uh, every day. Great, thank you. I want to move over to Germany now. Jens uh, is also is Birgit um, joining us in the conversation. You're, you're great. Thank you. If you two can introduce yourselves um, and your context, that would be great. Yeah, I'm Jens. Uh, I work at the Bundeskunsthalle. Um, our education team consists of um, a number of people. So we have a head of education, then uh, there's Birgit who does the inclusion program. She'll probably talk about that a bit more later. Then we have Katja who does uh, integration programs uh, with a focus on refugees. And um, we also have uh, Katrin and Rashid helping us in those programs. And um, what I do is mostly that I um, develop workshops. It's about, um, you know, practical artistic workshops um, related to the exhibitions. So visitors that can come to the Bundeskunsthalle can try out for themselves how to make art. And I do that together with a team of freelance artists from many different fields, because like um, we're a art and exhibition hall, we're not a museum, we do not have a collection. So it, it, it's very um, diverse, the program that we have. It can be about art, contemporary art. It can be about cultural history or science or uh, archaeology. So we, we always need different you know, expertises. And um, 
I'm here coordinating and organizing that and working in that together with the artists. And um, I think we try to create access for everyone or as many people as possible. And that's where, where Birgit comes in because um, she plays a very important part in that. Yes, hello everybody. My name is Birgit. I'm very much connected to Barcelona, Catalonia because my sister moved to Barcelona 30 years ago almost. And now she's living in the countryside, Vacaris is close to Montserrat. So I'm more or less often in this area and I, I would have loved to meet all of you personal. My topic, uh, as Jens told already, is to work with the uh, people and schools, uh, artists of different abilities. So. We are setting up projects um, to different exhibitions. For instance, uh, the last one we worked for was um, an exhibition about the composer and musician Beethoven. And we also had uh, almost four years ago, a very great exhibition working with people with Down's syndrome together to prepare an exhibition and the whole program beside. So. This is what you can ask me later. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And uh, now we're gonna move over to uh, Greta in Italy. If you can introduce yourself and share your context. Good morning, good morning everyone. I'm Greta Piropan. I'm part of the communication office at the CSC Centro per la Scena Contemporanea. And I say I'm part of the communication office because I'm half of it. <laughs> I'm working with uh, Alessia Banchetta, who's uh, the head of the communication office. And um, the CSC is a dance house that is part of the municipality of Bassano del Grappa. So it's a public body uh, located in the northeast of Italy. And we manage the communication of both the dance house and also of the festival, Opera Estate Festival, that every summer involves over 30 cities and presents um, around 150 events. Uh, and it's a multidisciplinary festival, so not just dance, but uh, also theater and music. Uh, the CSC Centro per la Scena Contemporanea is a dance house um, that is dedicated to the development of culture of contemporary dance in the region. And that's why even being part of the communication office, I'm here to speak also about uh, education. Uh, for us, education rhymes with collaboration, invitation, connection, um, because we work with schools, but we also work with different communities in the cities. And we are not just inviting them to um, meet the artist or to see, to watch a performance or to an event, but we actually connect, we try at least to connect them with artists and with the different um, languages, different artistic languages, the different um, nuances of contemporary dance, both in Italy in a local context, in a national context, but also in an international context. And we try to do it not just by presenting the artists, but also connecting them to the communities, to workshops and um, occasions of in-depth conversations, and also highlighting all the hidden practices that nourish an artistic uh, project, uh, whether it is dramaturgy or research. And we try to open up all um, the hidden practices behind uh, a festival even, or uh, an artistic project. And, um, and yeah, and not just try to communicate and storytell it, but actually involve the community in, in what our artists uh, do and what we do with the artists. Great, thank you, Greta. Um, now I would like to introduce some guests for our discussion today who are not part of the Dancing Museum partners, institutional partners, but we're very happy to have guests here for our conversation. Um, so Nina, and uh, they're in the National Museum of Oslo, if you can please introduce yourself and your context there, and also who's sitting next to you, so. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nina Denny-Ness and I represent uh, the, um, 
I'm a curator of learning or a curator of education. I represent the team uh, we call accessibility and diversity. And I also represent the team research on learning. And besides me, I have Annette Vandange, who is an independent dancer choreographer whom we um, collaborate with and will continue to do so. And before I, I give the word to you, I just want to mention that uh, our, um, our uh, involvement in, in dancing in museums um, uh, jump started last year when it was decided that we would um, for our opening or the year that the new huge museum that we're now sitting in, but that is not yet open to the public, uh, it will open into um, maybe next year or the year after. Uh, but we will um, then uh, collaborate with the National Ballet of, of uh, Norway and reconstruct the Bournonville Ballet that um, was made uh, inspired by a, an, an iconic work in our collection that um, symbolizes Norwegianness. So we're going into the whole um, very mind, you know, difficult minefield of national identity thinking, and we're using two choreographers, Tina Bjorn, Melissa uh, Howe from the National Ballet, and we're also involving um, Ahmed Umar, who is a Norwegian Sudanese um, cross disciplinary artist who will do uh, scenography and um, costumes. So this will uh, uh, focus attention on this uh, discussion going on about um, what is Norwegian-ness uh, today in our multicultural Norwegian society. So, uh, but I will then give the word to you, Ameta, and you can talk about your yeah. project. Hi, I feel like I'm a bit distant to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so uh, my name is Annette Brandanger and I, I work as an independent artist, but I, we are collaborating. So we're kind of trying to find out how, how that partnership is. Um, I'm working on a project that started a few years back and it, it's an interdisciplinary project with an actor and a singer. Uh, but dance and movement is sort of the focus. focus. And uh, and uh, it's it's a project that we developed um, that has a um, the flow between between the participants and the artists and the artwork is very important, and it's a performative space, but it's also a, a high level of interaction uh, where appreciation and reflection takes part. So this is actually a project that is touring. Uh, so the interest interesting thing with it is that it started off uh, in the National Museum as a workshop where pupils were invited into the museum and, uh, and, and interacting with uh, artwork. And then we brought it out in, on tour. So we've been visiting over 100 schools with a lot of kids. Uh, and there we have met uh, a lot of diversity, many challenges, but we feel that the, the methods and, and the project has something that is able to connect um, to everyone. And um, yeah, so, so kind of maybe what's important to say is that this, because it's a touring project, is we have like 70 minutes with a group of pupils in, and in that 70 minutes, our, our aim is to create this, um, a safe space where we introduce how uh, the children can connect to art uh, and the artwork through, through their bodies. And in the, in the end of the 70 minutes, they have, uh, they express themselves freely to, to uh, to series of paintings, which we find quite exciting. I'm going to move on because I haven't got much time. <laughs> um, so we we have um, now we're going to bring it back into the National Museum when it opens. Uh, so we're waiting exactly for that, and we want to uh, because we see that the project has is open and it's very inclusive, and we want to meet different um, uh, different audiences basically, and how to connect with different groups. Um, yeah, uh, we also creating, uh, to support this project, we're creating a resource material, um, which is more like a digital uh, platform, uh, which we are connecting to um, the school framework. There's a new, new school framework uh, happening here in Norway. So it's with democracy and life mastery and um, sustainability. So kind of interlinking that with the project. Yeah, I think that's... Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. going to stop there. <laughs> <laughs>
great. Uh, this gives us a good introduction to everyone that's uh, in the screen right now and who'll be joining us in this conversation. Uh, we're going to move into three rounds of um, discussion. So I'll give the themes for each round. Uh, what I want to say up front is that these themes were developed with Sonia and her team and with Mercat um, so that the themes that we're going to be discussing really come from the heart of the questioning process that lives inside of what we heard Sonia describing at the beginning. Um, for the listeners, I know we have listeners both here in the Zoom space as well as live in the YouTube uh, stream, the live stream. Um, and what I want to ask you all is that after we go through these three rounds, we'll have about 15 minutes uh, where we would like to hear what you heard. <laughs> so we would like to hear back um, some keywords, uh, questions or thoughts. Maybe you can think about it through the, the lens of what might you take from this conversation today back into your own locality? Um, and we would like you to ask you to share that in the chat box at the end or to turn on your mic and share it at the end. So just so you have your listening ears on orienting in that direction. So for the first round, we'll have 20 minutes and I'll read the question. Uh, how are the educational programs integrated in your context in a way that stays both true to the artistic proposal as well as connected to the desired educational context. So I'm going to copy and paste it and put it in the chat box. Um, but basically the interest is to understand how you all conceive and think about um, the projects that you're developing, both like in your institutional context and the educational context or the, the community you're interested to work at. What I already have um, picked up from hearing the introductions is that each of your departments seem to be the heart of um, the heart of trying to connect to uh, the varied audiences in your context. So it's it's uh, a very active um, engagement with the people that uh, you. It sounds like you really want to make sure feel very very welcome inside of your institution. So uh, the format that I've offered for our speakers is not that they wait for me to call on them or that we stay too polite in giving lots of space to everyone. We will be polite, we will give space to everyone, but the method here is that when anyone wants to speak or comment on something they've heard, they just hold an object uh, and we then will move to you, but that way we can keep the conversation flowing um, and we can more actively jump on something that we hear someone saying. So I will set the timer for 20 minutes. I'm gonna copy this question into the chat box for those of you who can see it. And I would love for the first object to fly into the frame so that I know who to call upon. You all had the questions beforehand, so I'm sure you're just dying to get going. Huh, so do I, <laughs> where, yes, thank you, Greta. <laughs> well, it's morning, so I have my cup of tea. <laughs> um, well, um, this um, question that you ask us, uh, which is how it is integrated in the context um, and the truth to, staying true to the artistic proposal, um, helped me uh, reflect on how uh, our, let's say, educational program or communication program uh, is very much linked to the whole programming of both the dance house and the festival. Um, so, we, what, in relation to the artistic residencies at the dance house, for instance, uh, we invite the artists to connect to the communities um, by offering um, workshops uh, who are free of charge and open to everyone. So we invite the artists to connect to both professional dancers um, and, yeah, teachers, dance teachers that live in the area, uh, but also to non-professionals. So to adapt their workshop uh, to many different uh, levels of expertise in relation to dance. We also invite them to join the DanceWell classes Dancewell is an artistic practice developed for people who are living with Parkinson's and the classes take place inside the museum. Um, 
or at least in the cloister of the museum. Um, now that we cannot access uh, the spaces, the closed spaces, for the reasons that we all know very well. Uh, but um, yeah, so they get in touch with the different communities. And it's more than us filling the audience with notions or with um, expectations and what, what to think about um, a specific language. We invite the communities to physically experience the, the language, the artistic language, the dance practice, and, uh, and from there develop um, um, a feedback, a response. And this brings me also to the sharing that we have at the end of the artistic residencies. So where the artists share uh, their research um, and where we experiment new ways of uh, asking for feedbacks from the audience uh, without stepping out of the scheme of the I liked this, I liked that, but more with asking uh, questions to the audience or the audience asking questions to the artist, uh, filling them with uh, images and emotions and giving space to everyone to formulate um, a feedback or a thought, uh, knowing that there is no right, no wrong, but just personal responses to it. And for us, I think it's very, very important that everybody experiences physically the, the dance practice. And we saw how uh, important it was both for elderly people, so the, the community that are of people that are over 60 years old, but also with uh, students, uh, high school students, uh, that experience all these changes in their bodies and that are, uh, yeah, are linked to, to each other through dance. I'm matching your coffee mug. I wanna ask you if you have any specific tools about developing how you would um, help your audience, let's say, or encourage your audience to give feedback. Have you developed tools for this this dialogue and exchange? Um, yeah, uh, we well we invite them to share usually an emotion or an image that was uh, that popped up in their mind. Uh, we also invite them to um, write down a word uh, if they feel too shy to talk in front of people. And we make sure that the feedback session happens in the in a context that feels like um, a living room, you know. Uh, we call it the foyer of the garage Nardini, which is where the the sharings uh, used to take place. Um, and we make sure, yeah, that it's that it feels like a safe space. And and yeah, and we also. Um, ask the artist to prepare some questions for the audience. But yeah, we try to um, invite them not to judge themselves. This is the first tool that we give the audience, which is like, don't judge what you are going to say. Uh, you're not here to uh, show how smart you are, but you're here to uh, share an emotion with the artist and no matter how important or not you feel that that emotion is, it can be an important part of the artistic research of this particular artistic research or an, a new one. Thanks Jens. Thanks Greta and now to Jens. Yeah, um, I wanted to, to react to what Greta was saying, because uh, you were saying that it's important for you that the people actually get to experience the art, the artworks and get into a dialogue uh, with the professional artists. And, um, and that's what we try to do as well. Like for me, the uh, concept of authentic art education is uh, at the basis of every concept um, that I develop. And that is basically about trying to, you know, get the educational program to be as, um, 
yeah, as as oh, I see objects waving, but um, as close to the process that that the you know the professional artists um, develop their own art pieces as well, um, and. Ideally, you know, by this, the, the visitors or the participants of, of our programs, they, um, yeah, get as close as possible to, to what it's like to produce an artwork as a professional artist. And because of that, we also, the people doing the workshops, they are professional artists themselves. And uh, we, we, we can work with the originals in the exhibition. So we, we, work or we, we draw in front of the originals or something like that and um and of course it always needs to be adapted to to the age their learning style the previous knowledges and that um and the time frame that you have but um experiencing the art as authentic as possible that's also probably one of the things that we try to do and then where possible also to participate and to contribute um, so that education not only reacts to what is already there, what the uh, the exhibition is about, but that we also generate content ourselves that were an integral part of the exhibition. And I don't want to be too long, but I, I, I could name uh, examples, but maybe other people want to. Before we move over to Annette, I just want to ask you to expand a little bit on the word authentic. Uh, this is a word I haven't yet heard inside of an education context. Um, what is that for you, the, this authentic art, um, art education, as you say? Um, what well, it means to try and make the process for the participants, um, you know, give them, oh, I don't know if that's a good to say in English, but most global kind of job, you know, global kind of understanding of the process. So from beginning to end, stay as close as possible to, to the process. The, the artists that were, you know, exhibiting have followed as well, or have gone through as well. And ideally work with the artists in those workshops. And, you know, and then our job is to train the artists to also be good educators, to also be good mediators and, and take people with them, but that, um, you know, try to make anything too simple or too easy or translate something that doesn't need to be translated, but try to get a, yeah, make it immediate, like the, how artists and, and learners meet. Great. We're, we're going to come to this accompaniment of the artists in the next round. Uh, but first, Annette and uh, Nina there in Oslo. Hey, I'm um, Yushe. Um, the camera is here and you guys on the screen here, but I want to look at you. It might be a bit weird, but I'm sorry. I, I get confused. No problem. <laughs> I miss being in the studio. <laughs> but the first thing I want to say was something about the important, we, because we brought the, the project out in the schools uh, on tour and, and we're really bringing the artwork the best way we could, can <laughs> into these schools. And it's been very important because we see like the variety of of knowledge and interest in the arts itself in the different districts around in Norway. So this has been very uh, interesting um, in itself, um, bringing arts with the artists um, in, um, into education setting, into their space. Um, and we, we have a, a, a project, we, we, we try to, we have it as a, as a performance that the, the pupils walk into, but then actually it's a workshop where they get to they can speak, we are in dialogue, they can interact, they can express themselves, but um, we kind of shift a lot between different, like sometimes we talk, but sometimes they watch a little mini performance and then maybe they are performing something because they've been through a, an, an um, experience where they get to create um, and, uh, and sometimes they listen to one of us who are the artists who, who express their own personal experience of looking at art, for example, and then the kids get, so we, um, I find it interesting, this setting where you kind of shift a lot between different variations on how you communicate with them. So I find that very interesting. And, uh, and, uh, and then once we are going into the museum, we would yeah. like to, would you like to continue yes, to elaborate on because that? Because what is, um, you know, the meta level here is of course, um, 
uh, a very ambitious new vision for the National Museum, where, um, where it is stated that our mission is to make the art, um, make art accessible to all. We are to make art relevant to all, and we are to reflect the society and the times we live in. And behind these words are, is a very important role for a, uh, a museum like this, which is to, to, um, to address this uh, society's polarization, divisiveness that we are struggling with all over the world today, um, and, uh, and see the museum's ability to function as a glue binding society together, binding people together. And, and uh, um, one way uh, to do that is to, to avoid this excluding of, of great audience segments, which is, which is what national mu museums have been struggling with so far, is that it's just for the white middle class. We can't continue like that anymore. So we're using all of the methods and languages that we have access to amongst other things, dance, and music, which is so universal, it's so universal, so so uh, transnational, and it's so functional in this setting, in this context, that so we must just keep on um, maximizing all that we can get out of this uh, method. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sonia, I saw a dancing stapler a few minutes ago. <laughs> yes, um, I would like to, uh, to explain also in the, in the line there, the our that everyone is talking that uh, for us it's like a, there are like two systems and we try to work like uh, putting these two systems together like in the same level uh, to generate a new context that is in the middle of the artistic field or educational field. Um, to do that we have this concept of process and at the end we are also a, a theater and we do exhibition and we would like to try to work inside education also, as a, can we work with an artist? That's why the concept from process to exhibition. Sometimes more of our, uh, our programs uh, are developed inside the school, no outside the school, inside the school, because we put the artist to work in, a, in the curriculum of the school there, to develop a whole process of a new, and of a new can be a pro, uh, with a, looking for a result, can be a performance, can be another thing, but to work with the, with the kids like in the same way he will work outside the school. To do that, they, uh, we work like a kind of a mediation team with the, with, the, with the school and with the teachers and with the artists. That's I think the, that equilibrium between the, the students, the teachers, the artists and the, the institution as Mercat have to work follow to put these two systems to work together. This process between process and exhibition, sometimes it comes inside Mercat to do this final presentation and can give us uh, another Hue, uh, another view, another spectrum of possibilities of inside Mercat have another kind of exhibition, not just professional artists, also educational artists indeed. And for us as Mercat, as I, as I think it's, it's a, a, whole, a whole, a process of learning, how to work with professional artists and also with non-professional ones, like students that come, but they need to add the whole technical, the whole uh, spectrum of a theater to put together to do this exhibition, to, thank, to finish this process. I think for us it's important to do this process inside the school, but also to take out this process inside the market. It's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a change, it's a continuum change. But to do that, to do that inside the school for us is uh, to be able to integrate our educational programs in, in the context, in the context of the city, for us is uh, more important, um, basic as well to be in relation with the other institutions. To, we are making this little slowly work since 15 years ago to our public institutions from cultural ones and to educational ones to respond to accompany us to be able to develop this project inside the schools and to make all these continuous blocks that go inside the school, go out the school, go to a theater, to be like a reality for the schools, to be a reality for our educational system. I think that's uh, basic for us. To do that, also we have to be surrounded for the, um, with institutions, other institutions to do it, to be able to develop this kind of processes inside the school with the teachers and the artists. Do I, yes, I thought I saw an object about to enter the frame, please, Stephanie. 
Um, I would like to um, to speak about the, the, the word educational or school or and uh, according to me and in my mind um, uh, I prefer use um, the word users and not public or audience or school um, because the, the, the term of users um, offer us a manner to uh, imagine our uh, place, our museums, uh, like a space to habit to, to use. Um, and the work of art, um, not artists only, but work of art, a piece of art which um, are hanging on the wall, uh, can have a different manner to be used uh, by the public, not only by the, the, the eye, but with the, uh, an experience very very complete um, and um, public is not only a public it's a users because uh, he have a responsibility as a citizen to use something and to take a part to give a part and um, and to participate uh, to the museum fundamental missions um, and because we are like you i think um, uh, state funding museum. We are no, uh, we are no private funding, um, only public funding. So uh, we have um, uh, the idea that uh, public it has to be a citizen to use a public space. Uh, I think it can um, uh, un uh, underline uh, underlines. Um, some of our uh, manner to do and to lead some manner to do, some way to do. As I said um, uh, in the introduction, the Val was born from um, the Department Council and um, the department has been a, a land of welcome of people and artists in particular who have fled oppressive or totalitarian regimes, uh, armed conflict, economic disaster, things uh, 15, uh, 1915, uh, 1950, excuse me. And um, it's um, interesting because now uh, the, the department is committed in, the, in welcoming uh, young people, um, immigrant people and um, uh, teenager and young adults. And, and the Magval is very um, involved in uh, such uh, welcome. So, um, we have to follow the, we follow the history of this, the creation of the museum. And um, what is at stake within our mediation policy if we thought about that? Uh, we put the notion of empathy at the earth of our mediation practice and um, an attention policy that invites us to develop an address for audiences placed um, and what, all the things you have said, I agree with that. I don't repeat what you have said very well and with an English very more precise than mine. So <laughs> I follow you in, the, in, uh, in these ideas. But I just want to add perhaps something about the context and about the manner we I imagine the museum and um, uh, uh, in the way that uh, Anna uh, P um, uh, address um, the problem of the inclusion in a museum, for example. Um, um, yes, um, the museum, it's a comfort zone, a safe space, a safe space in which uh, uh, all the worlds can emerge, experimentation can exist, but despite uh, it remains a producer of norms and um, some can be violent and um, the museum generates science, values, narratives that can be exclusive to as well. And for uh, me and for my team, um, it's not a creation of writing a new chapter of institutional criticism. It's not uh, this question, but um, uh, with, a, uh, with dance, with the project, the Dancing Museum project, for example, of, with artists, uh, we can um, create a space to bring out um, um, 
new new narrative and new um, uh, subjectivities can be uh, brought out in this project. But uh, every every month, every day, uh, our daily um, activities is to uh, to manage the institution and the public institution, such a politic institution, um, and. Uh, it's not easy to uh, involve public. It's not easy to make a place for them. Uh, every uh, every day we 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 wonder if uh, uh, we are able to do that. It's a, an ambitious, very uh, difficult, and sometimes we put artists in this uh, question and in this problem, and we uh, give them the responsibility to do that because the institution can do that. For example. Uh, and because uh, the artist will be um, in charge of uh, power or powerful to move uh, and to, um, you know. Uh, but I, may I add one example? We're actually a little bit out of time for this round, but please, okay. we, what you just did, what you just opened, what you just opened takes us into the second round. Okay. Um, but before we do that, I just want to give Jens, you uh, wanted to, if you just had to take a few seconds to follow up. Uh, yes, I'll be very brief. I just wanted to um, say that I find it so important what Nina said, and I think it also, uh, um, you know, played a role in, in, in the other contributions that um, we need to be more diverse and um, we need to, to understand that our audiences are more diverse and that we need to create access for more people. But on the other hand, that also means that we as institutions have to change and that's something that we discover that we, are, we have a long way to go there. So we, we try and take action to become more di diverse in our staff and also to make our staff um, more aware of of us more aware of what uh, people with uh, different abilities need, with uh, what people with a different, you know, cultural background need to feel welcome, to feel part of a team, to um, or a user visitor. You know, it's it's not only outside the institutions, also inside. So that that's the only thing. Great, thanks, Jens. Um, Iris, I saw you raise your object in the moment that Stephanie was talking about the next question. So I hope that we'll, we'll be able to bring that right along. We're, into, we're gonna enter the second round and the second round has to do with the question, how can the institutions accompany the artist in the school or program? So Stephanie, I'm just put it in the chat box. Stephanie, you mentioned that sometimes um, a bit of burden or a bit of high expectations can be placed on the artist um, who then kind of lands in a context that they might not feel equipped in. Um, on, on the other hand, perhaps the artist is actually infinitely more equipped for that setting than the institution is. So um, the question here is, is for you all is, what is the scope or frame you offer to your artist? Um, do you leave it very wide open for them to dive into? Do you um, uh, give um, kind of a, a smaller container for them to work inside? Do you accompany them actively with developing tools uh, in the moment for what they're encountering? Um, there, there's a spectrum of, of possibility in this question. So I'll now let the objects fly into the frame and uh, we will dive in. Iris, shall we start with you? Because you did have an object that, ah, I see uh, Nina, da, ah, Iris disappeared from my screen. I'm not sure if she's having technical problems. Um, um, and can, I, you, um, can you hear? Yes? Yes, okay. So Nina, yeah. let's, let's dive over there first. Yeah. Great. Well, um, uh, we have a strategy that is now in the, it's almost finished and uh, we're trying to implement it already. And, uh, um, we're supposed to be, we're, we're striving to be innovative amongst other, um, other uh, things. Uh, uh, and uh, if you are innovative, you have to respect artistic thinking, the whole uh, aesthetic activity as such. And the, 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 the way artists have access to their creative flame. And uh, we have, we are um, course, how do you say, we have workshops, uh, where we learn, the staff learns how to um, how to make creativity grow in a in a group. You know, um, 
these workshops are not often enough given, but we do participate, the ones of us who who have uh, um, who have interest in this. And uh, Can I jump so, in for a second just to clarify? Yes, so you're yes. saying that the staff, um, the entire staff participates in the workshop from the artist as a way for everyone to be learning around how to, let's say, transfer or engage the artistic process with the users. I'm going to continue to say users now instead of audience because I think it's a great term. Is that how you mean um, that you, the staff yeah. is like actively participating? I suggested that we have a series of workshops of that character last week, but that has uh, as of yet not uh, been implemented. But we have had specialist creative processes um, come to us and teach us how to how to keep that flame going because it's very easy to blow out the creative flame. And therefore, artists are, are so, in a way, um, they're holy. You know? We have to learn from them. We have to we have to uh, shield their uh, their creativity as much as possible in processes that where where we cooperate together. And it's very easy to kill somebody's creative flame. So we have to. It's, it's walking very carefully on 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 eggshells in a way. You know, uh, we have to be aware of all the mechanisms as museum staff, all the mechanisms that kill that good energy, and respect artist's integrity and, and their uh, sensitivity and processes and so we don't just run over people and and uh, dominate and make them not uh, having a uh, how do you say uh, losing losing the, the gist of it all yeah yeah great Sonia I saw your highlighter dancing and, Hi, uh, and then we'll come to Stephanie I uh, really agree what Nina was saying. Uh, we don't have to uh, go dominate the artist. Uh, of course, I think that it has to be uh, quite free because we are interested in develop uh, her own language inside also our educational programs. And for us, I think that a really important question is how we do this invitation to work in education, how we, uh, where we, put this, uh, this invitation to the, to the artist. Uh, how we invited him to participate, how we invited him to create in this new field, in new, this new, perhaps new territory for the choreographer. Um, it depends on how we, where we put this invitation, we have to be closer or we have to be perhaps in a, in a far distance or on, in, in the process. Because always, normally, we are, normally I'm talking about process inside a school, in, in spite of being a kindergarten or high school. The only time we, we will carry on this project is always because there is a, an artist that goes inside the school. And I think it's a question, of, again, of equili um, equilibrium to generate like a share, uh, a share space between the artist and the school. But for do that, um, because uh, it depends on our mediation, because sometimes we make this invitation to artists that have a really, a, uh, they are already used to work in education, or they are really used to work on this kind of uh, territories. But sometimes we do this invitation to perhaps an artist and they've never been, been closer to that, or never thought that the work he does can be a, is a tool or can be able to continuously rethinking and develop it inside, the, inside an educational program. Sometimes uh, we do that. And if we do that, we really have to be really um, uh, uh, close <laughs> to the artist and to do the, and to, to do, uh, uh, to make the bridge with the school, like in a really, uh, really closer way. To this, um, because uh, it's not just you jump it there in the school and you leave it there <laughs> because um, it's not their own responsibility. To the artist, this equilibrium between the institution, the artist, the school, the kids, and we have to be really, really, really close to this. But not in the content of what is he going to develop or she's going to develop, but an around how can he be integrated on the system. Uh, here in Catalonia, here in Barcelona, there's no. From the last ten years, the last twenty years. Uh, we here again to talk about contemporary practice inside the schools. 
but less, I think, but they're not really used. Our schools, our house schools, they're not really used still to develop these kind of programs. The four, we are making a lot of small works with the uh, educational community to be able to make it open, because sometimes they're really close, to put these actors, these artists to work with the students. Therefore, it's not, we have to be really close to the artist, but also really close to the schools and to do a really, uh, a really close mediation to the teachers and open other kind of tools or resources to the teachers, to the schools, to be able to understand, to be able to develop, to be able to be integrated with an artistic process inside the school that nobody knows who we are going. I think that the, and it's, I, I think it's a kind of shared vulnerability uh, place for all of us, all of us, because in a, now when we do process inside the school or wherever, nobody knows where are we going. We are putting some uh, actors there. We are, I'm, an, I'm, I'm proper, um, it's me, it's the artist, it's the school, it's the, the kids, but we don't know what we're gonna do. And sometimes in our schools, it's really hard to be comfortable with this concept. Okay, there's no book, there's no methodology. And I think we have to be really close and at the end to give a lot of uh, open space for everybody to develop. I love that you're highlighting the shared uh, vulnerability because when you're working with people across institutions uh, who have very different roles in institutions that might not be an art institution, to bring everyone to that zone that it's it's an experiment and we're going somewhere where we don't we're steering the ship not knowing where it's sailing to yet um it's this i can imagine this can be quite a challenge to bring everyone into that space um next was uh stephanie then iris then jens and we have about eight minutes left in this round so i'm gonna let you balance that out <laughs> okay uh, i i will be quick um I, I want to hear the Ingrid's words yesterday because she speak about um, uh, colleague. Uh, and I like this uh, term uh, because we, uh, we invite artists to participate to our um, educational and cultural programs as artists, but also as a partner on colleagues. And uh, we, um, these colleagues offer us opportunities opportunities, excuse me, to overcome the traditional rules of mediation, to overcome our traditional relationship with partners, and um, they transmit through artistic practice and shift our habits, our role. Um, freedom, it's okay, it's great, it's a, uh, uh, but um, I consider I'm a project manager, an artist is also as well a project manager. And we, we have different tools to work, but um, I like to uh, imagine that we work with, a, um, with them in a spirit of great reciprocity. And we share the vulnerability, but we share also the power. And uh, it's a balance to, to find um, when the project is short, it's easier. When it's long, it's uh, more difficult. But the tools are used the tools used are the same as for the production of an exhibition. Um, there is a curatorial, curatorial team, spaces, budgets, and uh, we say to budget and timeline, um, timetable, excuse me, uh, evaluation criteria. I think it's important not to avoid evaluation also, but because we can in, uh, uh, create new manner to um, evaluate and to uh, overcome this very straight uh, administration uh, evaluation. And um, if we imagine that we are colleagues, uh, it's very easier and fluid uh, in my mind. And um, I, I imagine that also artists uh, can um, um, be if he wants also an, a magister, an educator with us in the same level, but with different rules. And for example, we um, have created an audio guide, audio guide, yeah. Um, and inside you can uh, find speeches from, directly from artists. And I didn't cut anything. It's a free speech about piece of art and there are no mediation voices and uh, a pedagogical voice uh, um, narrative in the audio guide it's, it's really the, the free, 
free speech of the artist. And um, it's, uh, it's an example, a very simple example and cricket, a concrete example of our partnership. Great, I'm gonna to pass to your colleague Iris now and then we'll come to Jens to wrap up this round. Um, what I, I want to say it would connect something of the first round and then this round is the importance also when we think accessibility, it's also to go at school. So not only develop a project inside of the museum, but importance to go and see uh, the reality in the hospital and school and uh, migrant camp and uh, and this uh, this summer uh, I had the opportunity to work with two artists inside a migrant camp and uh, we learned so much we learned so much from them uh, and uh, next year we will continue another kind of uh, project another kind of artistic residence uh, with them again and other school so it is important not only to think how uh, people, how users will come, but how we will make this displacement. Because it's also important, I think, to, in a museum, I don't know all your realities, but at the McVal, we have a very comfortable space. Uh, we have a material, we have, uh, we have everything. So how is also what it means, where I come from in Brazil, we don't have this kind of uh, reality that is so comfortable. Uh, we never had this. So how is it important to learn uh, how to do it when you don't have all the material things? So how you invent things, how you create, how you improve improvising things with this reality. And uh, you today you plan something and tomorrow you see that it's you cannot do anything that you plan it. So how you do it, how, how you, you work with, with people. So I think uh, it's important to move yourself also. This, uh, this program, it's also about to go in different uh, cities and to learn to see how inside of this uh, context what, what is happening. So I think in local, context so we do this a lot is how to go how to deplace ourselves and the artists to to think a new project yeah great thank you Jens uh, if you can wrap up this round for us um, yeah I think for us it's very important like there's a there's a difference whether it is about formal learning like for schools uh, or whether it's a, a project that is more free in, um, in terms of how much freedom, how much space we can give to the artists in that project. Because, um, for example, um, we had an exhibition about Beethoven in the beginning of the year because it's his anniversary and stuff, and it was supposed to be a big year, and then uh, COVID came. But um, there, there we also had uh, Goya drawings in there, and they were there in the curriculum. And uh, it's important that we do something with them because um, the students, um, you know, they, they, it's it's part of their A level exams. So um, then we, in in that case, we would ask an artist um, to to work with us in the scope of of the curriculum and our educational concept. And um, then we say, okay, it needs to be about Goya. It needs to be these uh, certain drawing techniques, and uh, and that's the time frame and. And one artist would develop that with us, and that would be kind of like, uh, you know, something that all the other artists who are doing the same workshop they will will follow that concept as well, because then sometimes you get nine hundred students, and they all have the same thing that they need to learn, and and it's very important that it's very precisely the same concept followed, you know, that they all have the similar experience, that they are all well prepared for their A levels. And the other thing will be like if we have an artist-led participatory project that is is more free and where where we then say okay uh, we work with a group of young adult refugees and um, in this exhibition there are certain narratives objects that might be of relevance but um, we ask choreographers to to go and see for themselves and and um, 
and they make all the, the, the important choices and um, they can choose what methods to use. And, and so then it's just for us important for us that, you know, what they do in that also meets the needs and the learning styles and the previous knowledge of the, of, of the group uh, so that they get together. But then it's something that Masako said yesterday was probably that she liked it when the, the museum staff, when they were kind of given space, but were invisible. And then, then that's what we try to do. So it's different whether formal or informal learning. Great, thank you. Um, I would like to ask our speakers here in this frame, um, do you need a, what we call a comfort break? I just learned this term. Do we need a two minute break um, to refresh or can we keep going? Just give me, if you need a break, put uh, your object up or your hand up. I see, okay, great. So we're gonna take, let's say three minute break um, so that we can come back and dive right back into conversation for the last round, okay? Yeah. Thanks everyone, mm -hmm. three minute break. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to try to call everyone uh, back in so that we can move into the final round. I'll just wait till we see our colleagues showing up. We need Stephanie and Germany back, yes. <laughs> Just gonna wait for Stephanie before we head into the final round. For our listeners, uh, we will have 10 minutes at the end uh, in case you have any additional questions or impressions or anything you want to share. As I asked, uh, we will ask you what you heard. Um, great, so moving into round three now, the question is what kind of tools are you utilizing to give support as well as autonomy to the teachers in the schools you are working with. So this is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the chat box now. This is directly, let's say in context and um, in relationship to schools. So we're thinking teachers, but I know that uh, 
from what I've heard, there's been um, several contexts being mentioned. So we can also think of um, the colleagues of any of the institutions um, outside of the art institution that we're engaging with. How are we collaborating with them and what kind of tools are we giving for them also to continue the what's been unfolded in the artistic process when the artist leaves, let's say as well. So I'm giving now a moment for the objects to dance. Yes, <laughs> go for it, Greta. Um, I'm using this object, uh, which is the book of the uh, of Masako's project, Sayer Yovamu, because it's the most recent activity that we did with teachers, um, high school teacher in this case. Um, so we invited the teachers to uh, follow our program, a, an educational program for them as well, um, because we started by inviting the classes, uh, the, yeah, the, their students to uh, the dance classes, and we shared with, um, with the students some activities to help them name the soft skills that they were using or that they were developing throughout the dance classes. Uh, and we realized how much the teachers were curious about it. So they were happy when we shared with them the results. But at the same time, their question was, uh, how do we um, uh, introduce this kind of awareness and knowledge in our students inside the classroom as well when we have a program to follow as Jens was saying. Quick question, Greta, can you define soft skills for people that uh, this might be a new term for them? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, well it, it will require it would require like one hour <laughs> of speech but let's say that our both that they are different from knowledge and competence. Uh, they are skills that everybody has that are personal and social skills. And they can be things like teamwork, uh, awareness, personal awareness, empathy, um, and the ability to work with, uh, with the others and also on themselves, and creative and critical thinking as well which is something that as artists or as people that work with artists, we use a lot every day, uh, even without knowing it. So this is our toolbox. And this is what we wish to give the teachers. So if on one hand, we have a very clear agreement with the artist, which is, okay, we invite you to, to lead this workshop or this um, educational program, because we think that you are the right person for these reasons and we share a common goal and we give them space to uh, create their path inside of this common goal. At the same time, the agreement with the teachers is very clear, which is this is our toolbox. We think um, that it might be useful for you as well uh, for not just the artistic development of your practice inside the, the classroom, but also for the personal development of both you as a teacher and of all the students that you have, and also to get to know them better uh, outside of the, you know, the tests that you give them. Uh, and if the teacher is interested, <laughs> well, then that's where the meeting happens, where the magic happens. And, uh, and, this is, and that's how we share the, the toolbox. And it's a mutual development, both for the artist that gets to uh, develop a new professional field to work on, but, and for the teacher who gets to bring um, new activities inside the classroom. And Diary of Mood uh, was something that we um, presented to the teachers as a good practice not especially nowadays that they are forced to work on Zoom, to teach through Zoom or uh, uh, through digital um, ways, through, through digital medias. And, and we explain to them how this artistic project managed to bring 60 people to share um, a movement every two, uh, yeah, archive a movement every day and share it with other 60 people that they didn't know. 
and create a community from a digital space without knowing each other. So we said, okay, this is the project, this is the toolbox, this is the tools that we activated, the skills that we activated. How could you bring this kind of uh, project inside of the classroom when it's a digital classroom? I hear a, a sharing of vulnerability inside of this description you just gave. Um, Iris, you had uh, a little die on top of your head if you want to. <laughs> Oh, a little bit down. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I want to share a Cronkett case and a kind of talk that we have in a museum. And for this, I, I prepare a formal presentation. I don't know what, <laughs> may I, I share with you? So I think it, I'll, it would be easy to go focus on the important thing and you can have the information, visual information and uh, write information about the, this, this project. So I, I do my best to- Yeah, Iris, do you mind if I um, kind of hold you to a few minutes there um, as, uh, can, I, can I come in in a few minutes so that we can, because yeah. I also am conscious that uh, we haven't heard from Birgit yet and I'd love to hear her oh, voice yes. in this final round. So uh, I will, I will come in in a few minutes, okay? Okay. We're happy to see your images. No, no, please come back, share your screen <laughs> and share your screen and I will jump in in a few minutes so that we make sure we, we stay on time, yeah? Iris, are you going to, ah, great, your mic came back on. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I, I understand that it would, I will present in a few minutes. Ah, no, no, I meant, uh, sorry <laughs> for the confusion. I meant, uh, please share and, uh, but I might jump in in a few minutes to um, oh, okay. interrupt so that we can make sure we also hear from everyone yeah, in the yeah. final round. I really try I mean. to be sorry. very, very quickly. Uh, so just to say that we have a museum uh, training that called ASH that uh, artists came to give us training when I say us as uh, guides and teachers. We are uh, together to learn, uh, to experiment different ways of uh, living uh, and doing a visit in the museum. And uh, I'll focus, uh, like, like travel with a uh, suspendu uh, or artwork. Excuse me, Riz, can you define what is ASH? Can, can you? <laughs> yeah, ASH <laughs> is for teachers who are um, in, in charge of uh, accompanying a um, um, school um, with disabilities, for vulnerable people and uh, uh, disabilities and um, handicap, okay, handicapped children. Thank you. <laughs> and so, and last year we we have uh, two uh, artists who came, and uh, this is suspendu for those who came in museum last year. Maybe you remember. This is a focus. And uh, what I say, it's in April. I I have two groups. One of teacher who live it, who make this training. I wasn't participating, so I don't know what they did. And uh, even if you don't read in French, you can see that they sent to me. It's very organized and very detailed about what they want to do with their students and this uh, visit. So the idea is they live, they make a training, and then they propose something to their students. So I was with them to participate of their proposition with one at work. And then I, I propose another experience in another artwork. And at the same day, I also got a group from uh, students uh, of high school uh, who wanted to work with a sound approach with the artworks. I'll say after why this is important. Uh, and let's say in April, all these groups, uh, I learned a lot of them because uh, I, in May with another colleague, I gave a new visit 
uh, to a new a group of teachers and uh, I use this uh, their proposition and suspendu of monatum to this group of teachers. What I'm saying this is not only me, uh, the guide who has learned from artists that is proposing something, I am proposing to other teachers something that teachers teach me uh, and propose me. So how can uh, uh, like a circle and kind of way of uh, living it and sharing different experience and then uh, Anna <laughs> she saw this artwork with me uh, many times uh, and uh, how and then on the workshop she, I don't know if you remember but at one moment when we were the entrance of the museum she mentioned this artwork this way of because if you stand, if you sit, or if you lay down, you don't see the same thing. So how to displace, how to move your body uh, to see uh, different, uh, an other way, the, this artwork. And uh, yeah, to, sorry if, if it's too <laughs> short, but it's, it's not only about uh, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm learning and teaching from everybody. So how we can share with uh, guides, with teachers, with uh, other persons, with uh, medicines, with people who are, is coming and how we learn from them and how we share uh, the experience that we have. Thank you so oh, much, please. Edith. I think this is a great so example of, yeah. um, of, the, of the colleague approach that this equality of um, shared roles, shared knowledge, and the reciprocity that uh, Stephanie also commented on. Um, Birgit, I'm conscious that you haven't had a chance to, uh, I haven't seen any object flying in your frame, but I also am conscious that you haven't had a chance to, to make a contribution yet. If there's anything that you want to add um, inside of this last round, uh, please feel welcome. Yeah. And then we'll come to you, Sonia. Yes, okay. Flying object. Thank you. It's from one of the artists we work with. With um, I'm mostly working with a school with special needs and students with special needs and artists um, who call themselves handicapped and others who don't. Um, and for us, it's very important in the Bundeskunsthalle, as one of the colleagues or two mentioned, that it's important to, to work together in the team, but not only in the educational department. So what my work was and still is, together with my other colleagues, um, to open up the work with the um, students who are handicapped or teachers of their schools and artists to develop things uh, not only for guided tours and things like this but also for parts of the exhibition to implement um, different perspectives in the narration of exhibitions. Uh, we do not have special tools for that or preparations but we develop always um, on the topic of our exhibitions as uh, Jens always told uh, talked about in the beginning um, and what I like very much is um, if we start this process together with medias, mediators from outside because we have many in Germany who are um, developing processes of becoming a more open and inclusive um, institution, what a museum has to become, like uh, my colleague from Oslo uh, mentioned. Um, so this is uh, another process I'm working um, in a, in a pro project with, with many um, uh, museums from Germany. And we are also in this uh, process in our um, institution. Maybe this is just um, to add. Thanks, Birgit. Uh, I saw Sonia with an object and then we'll come to Annette and Nina. Hi, uh, I really agree with a lot of things uh, um, we, are, we are sharing. It's great to share this knowledge. 
uh, between all of us. And I think this is a clue as well also for the teachers and to give them uh, like autonomy. I think this uh, ecosystem of share, of share knowledge or share uh, will make us feel afraid of these kind of projects that, that give us uh, to be close one to each other. An artist is no a genius that is out in the stratosphere, is also a worker, <laughs> like the teacher and like the mediation. At the least, it's really important. Sometimes the teachers get afraid of this kind of processes because they sometimes they are physical reality they are not close to them perhaps we don't know and and, and it's really important to lose this uh, to lose and to to lose this afraid of talking about art or do yourself to put to empoderate about your own this uh, talk your own world around it. Uh, to give this autonomy to the teachers uh, from Alisa's uh, we try to uh, open a different ways of seeing dance, movement, art from the practical, from the exhibition, or from lectures, from training, practical training. If you're gonna have to put the kids to move, perhaps we have to. We should move before as well, or we should move with them. Sometimes, this, uh, sometimes we we found inside the schools that teachers they want the kids to move, but they don't want to move them themselves. That's why it's really hard to talk about. Uh, okay. This is a transformation process for all of us. Yeah, I ask, and normally when I go in this kind of project, I do the class with the, the, have the training with the artists and the kids, and I try to push also the teachers, but there are some that really go forward, but others, okay, no, that's not for me, I'm the teacher. Because normally this kind of projects inside the market, they are in the, the formal learning education. They're inside the, 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 the timetable of the normal subjects. Um, and they are really, uh, they, sometimes these teachers have a, a, a role of being the teachers that is like, a, um, like a, a far away from the practical the student is doing. Okay, these are teachers, a group of students, I, give, I, sh I share a knowledge, but there are, and with this kind of practicals, I think we try, we try to um, break this kind of uh, dimension, they are separate, they are the same. And I'm going backwards again to this concept of shared knowledge. The kids have to learn us. We have to learn from the kids. The teacher has to learn to the artist. And the artist, of course, has to learn also to the, the knowledge of the teacher because at the end, it's their system. We have to empoderate both of them to open a dialogue. I just want to share just in one moment. One pro we have a lot of problems, a lot, lot of kind of programs doing in education and artists, but it's one that is called Tandem. But did, we did it already like a few years ago. It was a four years project that were the, um, there were a group of uh, two choreographers that go inside a school, a primary school for four years to develop how to, how to mix, how to join, how to merge dance with all the subjects in the school from kindergarten to 12 years old to the primary and the we mix, we mix it with mathematics, we mix it with language, with uh, second language like English, with uh, like environmental subjects. And in the choreographers that uh, get inside the school, the teacher didn't have any kind of experience with dance. And um, it was a uh, double discover, uh, discovery for the kids and for the, uh, for the teachers and also to the choreographers. Of course, it was a really, uh, there were a lot of, um, uh, conflicts <laughs> around because it was a it's a it was a huge project, and and it was for four years old. And after these four years, we still have like a, a relationship with that school because all the all the question we have a lot in the in our department is how to make sustainability, how we work to sustain this project when the mediation when the institution is not there. Okay, there is, and that being, therefore we have to work in autonomy of the center, autonomy is a teacher to, to be able to look for the needs about what they want to do with our contemporary art inside. When we are there, we are together, but when we are not there, when we finish a project, what happened with this sustainability? 
And that's yeah. the question we don't have to solve yet. Yeah, no, but, but I mean, giving an example of a four-year collaboration is also really powerful. Yeah. Um, we have just one minute left in this round uh, before we open it to um, comments and questions and impressions from the listeners. So one last minute to our colleagues in Oslo. I saw an object a minute ago, if you want to give us a little wrap up. Uh, we don't hear you yet. If you can flip on the mic, then we'll, yeah. Hello, oh, sorry, I'll be very quick. I think Sonia also touched upon what I was going to say, but this thing with the teachers is very, I mean, I, like it's very easy to be, to be thinking inclusive with the, the children, but also to include the teachers in the process and making sure that they feel like they can be part of it is very, very important. We often have like a, a full on warm up, which is very gentle and very accessible and very easy to step into. So it doesn't feel scary at all. So I think this is very important to also maybe support the teachers while you're in whatever work you have, but to sort maybe they can help to support you in the work. And how do you do that? How do you how do you approach them? I think that's very important as well. And and to to be as the as the artist is the, in the work, you can use your skills to to build up the relation relations crisscrossing across the studios. So yeah, that's the, very it's, very important. It's, um, it's great what you're bringing up the how to build up the relationship I think is, is a really important part of, um, of the questioning process of how to develop these programs because it's one thing to say, hey teachers, you need to participate and yet we also have to give a bit of space for them to have the time to drop all their training and roles and boundaries that they might have in place for a reason with mm -hmm. their students. And so how to understand and learn where mm -hmm. everyone can, literally everyone can feel safe, teachers, us, artists, participants, um, there, there's, there's many facets to what it means to feel safe in this kind of environment. And for the last 10 minutes, I wanna open it up to um, our listeners. Uh, maybe also for the last 10 minutes, we can turn all the cameras on so that uh, we can, we can uh, have all the faces again. Um, even if it means that we're just gonna see faces typing into the chat box of um, impressions. So yeah, the last 10 minutes, you can turn your mic on and share a question or an impression, or you can type into the chat box um, any sort of keywords, um, uh, new, new things you may have heard today or reminders of um, approaches you heard today that are, feel important for you to take it back into your own locality. Um, we have an open final 10 minutes. And I don't know if anyone has an eye to the live authentic education. Yeah, this was a term I also was uh, excited to hear in the beginning, a new, a new words. Uh, Fito, one second, I just wanna say, if anyone has attention to the live stream, if anyone's typing anything there, I'm not sure who's in charge of that, but if anything shows up there, please just copy it over. So um, Fito, do you wanted to share something? Yeah, I want to say something. First of all, I want to say thank you, but I'm really, really happy to see that we are really, really on a line or think similar, even if the word that you use became from different layers or semantic uh, lens or whatever. But I think that we are cooking a really, really tasty soap. So um, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to be here and I will share tomorrow a lot of things. But uh, one thing that for me is really, really important is a word that, that is, is something really uh, common in, in that uh, conversation is empathy. Understand empathy in different levels, not only as it's something in one direction. And also something that Jens um, said, that it was authentic. And you also say that, Monica. And for me, authentic means uh, real. Authent authentic is a concept, making real in our way of working in, a, in an institution. Make a real experience, not only um, a quick uh, CV line or whatever. Make that experience real for, for us and for the... So tomorrow I will say uh, more things, but thanks for that great chest is hope. That's great, Fito. As you're speaking, I actually am seeing in the chat box other people writing, making real and authentic and users. Users was, a, I think, a big word for a lot of us today, the, especially when you're thinking in a museum context um, where you're kind of not supposed to touch. Like you're not supposed to touch objects and the idea that you can be a user and engaged in multiple senses and multiple ways is um, an exciting um, approach. And does anyone else want to share something with a mic? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing lots of exciting comments going. We can take a moment to collectively read. Uh, yes, Ellie. Go for it. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I had a question that kind of came up a bit earlier in the conversation. Yeah, again, thank you. It's been really great to hear from all of you. And I think this, um, yeah, I wish this happened a lot earlier. It's really great. Um, yeah, a little bit of a maybe provocation um, in relation to uh, Nina, what, uh, what Nina said about um, the creative flame. And I kind of, and other people have addressed it as well. Um, I can, I, I, I'll read what I wrote. Um, can we really combat elitism in the fullest possible way if we consider artists to be holy? And yeah, as an artist, um, I feel more comforted by the idea that I'm a colleague, which is a word that Stephanie has used and Ingrid has used and Sonia used the word worker um, because of the kind of, uh, I suppose the dream of everyone can be an artist. Uh, if we really step back, we have to actually believe that. And if we believe that, then everyone in this Zoom meeting has the potential to be an artist. So why do we treat artists artists in terms of people who do it professionally um, differently, I suppose? Yeah, I don't think it's this, this is not a question to be answered, but it's just a kind of thought. Um, I don't feel like I want to be holy. <laughs> Masako, did I see a hand coming up or was that a coincidence? Yes. Great. Um, what I meant by holy is that uh, in today's world, creative thinking and innovative thinking is extremely, extremely important. And anybody who has access to that type of dynamics uh, or that type of, of um, inner processes is, is in a way uh, special. Um, and we have to look after our artists and we have to look after artistic uh, energy. And that can, it, it, can, it can appear in, in people who are not trained as artists, of course, but the artistic drive today is more essential than any time before or in history probably. So yes, in a way it's holy, <laughs> but not the artist as such, but the energy. Mm. Thanks, Masako, I see that you're also wanting to share something, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, thank you a lot. Uh, it's been uh, very energizing to hear everyone and uh, really like warming up and uh, um, yeah just just hearing what you all were saying uh, you made me feel visualize uh, a membrane so where it uh, uh, substances are going in and out in an equal way maybe it's not uh, what happens uh, in real in reality but uh, it was a, a good feeling and a great attempt uh, I think so. Um, I think uh, this, what you were saying about, uh, yeah, the being uh, the league, uh, Ingrid, Stephanie, and also Ellie again said it, but we repeat it because it uh, it it makes a lot of sense and uh, uh, and also stressing the fact that everyone could try to together. So it's not only artists. Uh, sharing uh, and then also teachers as uh, as uh, who was saying that Iris, Iris, you were saying yeah that uh, teachers also can give you uh, something back if it was you. I was a little confusing, but yeah, and uh, more things, but I will write them. No, with the collective soup we're making, it's hard to remember who said what <laughs> with the with the screen format. I, I can't see everyone on one screen. So if anyone else is trying to hold an object up, I can't necessarily see you all at one time. Um, if anyone yeah. else, ah, I hear yeah. Kim, go for it. I'm eating go chips. for it, Kim. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's great that we, that we um, well, everything that we've heard, but now I just came also to something that also I struggle with, um, which is gratification. Um, at some point, when do you feel you have achieved something? Uh, what are the spaces for recognition? 
that you find within your structures. It is always something about missing. Um, how, how can you, how do you work within an institution on that uh, constant lack of something? And if there are places for you to recognize that you've done something and what are those? Do any of the institutions want to respond or do it? Yes, Jens, go for it. I think um, maybe if, if you feel like people that have not been to the museum before, they, they are there, they are performing perhaps inside an exhibition space and they're really engaged and they feel like it's their space and they can tell their story and um, that's something like with a project that, um, yeah, we realized with the refugees and, and that, 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 you know, that there's a new layer there, that, um, a new kind of artwork um, was created. And that's that's perhaps the, the energy that Nina described, of course, because you feel there's something else there, something that's connecting people, art and, the space, the museum, and that's that to me feels like okay, we've achieved something. Yes, Greta. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with uh, what Jens was saying, and also for me, um, I realized that we have achieved something when the teachers, for instance, come to us and say, "Okay, I've witnessed this creative process," or I've uh, met this artist. Uh, how can we bring the artist inside the school? Can we work together on a project? Or, okay, I really appreciated this uh, performance or, or this artistic process. Uh, how can I use it in the classroom? So it's when the dialogue keeps going that um, I find my own, or as I should say our own, uh, gratification so when it's um, and also I feel that it's when I I realize that I learned something as well or when I have the I'm not saying the awareness but this kind of sparkle that what we did may not resonate now but we resonate on a long term uh, in in what and I'm saying this uh, in regard thinking about the students that came to the dance well classes or to the dance classes in general, when we were uh, reflecting on soft skills, the, their surprised, you know, uh, expressions, their expressions of surprise on their faces, realizing that they had some skills, but they, that they couldn't name it uh, before seeing them on a, on a list or before practicing them. Uh, I'm sure that it's not something that changes their life from that moment on, but that will resonate a lot um, in the future for them. Uh, Stephanie and then Sonia. Um, in order to uh, focus on gratification and to offer gratifi a gratification for each participant of the project, um, uh, we have to uh, wonder if the project are visible and uh, what is the room that the museum can make to offer a space of visibility of such projects uh, built with artists and um, non-expert or, or non-artists. And usually in your museum, you don't have any place. Uh, perhaps uh, I heard, I don't know where, uh, in um, Fondation Miro, I think you organize uh, exhibitions of projects built by artists and communities. But in our museum, we have no room at all. So we have created um, a, a digital space. It's a platform where uh, artists, public participants and institutions can um, not only document, a document, but also uh, uh, have, a play, have a digital room for gratification for, um, it's called crossed creation on the website of the museum. And each day we select 10 projects we have made with artists and communities. 
uh, and uh, participants can send us pictures, send us movies, send us their, docu their own documentation in order to show what they, uh, 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 what they have created during these experiences. So uh, in terms of gratification, I can um, understand your question came like that, how to make visible the project inside the institution and not only in, um, and perhaps a day we could have a room, a concrete room to uh, make a real display, an artistic dis display. Um, but um, at this moment, it's not really possible Sonia, do you want to, you also wanted to add something on at the end? Yes, I will, I will go really fast because I think we are run out of time. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I, do, I believe my work in the concepts of gratification or recognition, re, recognize, uh, I don't know. I think for me it's like a day by day work and I, day by day, and I, uh, I don't think there is a concrete moment well, I just realized that it's giving me something or something happens. I don't know. I think it's more after the time, after year by day, how it resonates on my own work or how I can discover I learned something. But normally it's not in, in the middle of the work. Perhaps it can happen like after one year or after, I don't know. I think day by day for me is uh, I stay... For me, it's the same. I put in the same grade of interest that the first day when a process like this in the educational system, at the end when we do the exhibition inside the Mercat, at least for myself, I'm talking for myself. I think there is a, the process normally are really, there are plenty of conflicts. And I think when I manage or I see that the different actors, in spite of the conflicts, in spite of the, to being afraid, can be in a, in a shared dialogue or a shared space. I think I, I think I feel that's a good uh, at least a good moment in the day by day uh, processes when they can be in a con constant dialogue together. But it's not like a moment where somebody says something or they come to me or the children at the end when we do the exhibition. I think I see it more like a really long career. Really, and I perhaps I realized about my, my own learnings after a while, as they were saying before, it resonates after the time, but it's not in the day by day. I don't know. Thanks, Sonia. Um, indeed, we are coming to an end. We've gone a few minutes over. Um, I want to say thank you to all the speakers in the conversation. Um, our uh, guests from Oslo already had to leave, but thank you, Nina, Annette, Jens, Birgit, uh, Veronique from the beginning, uh, Sonia, Greta, Stephanie, um, and uh, yeah, also really thank you Barcelona for bringing this conversation forward. Um, and Sonia, it was great to collaborate with you in the last couple of days to think of these questions. It was very meaningful, I think, to the kind of conversation we could have today. Um, there's still a lot of great comments showing up in the chat box. So I um, hope whoever the host is will archive this, this chat and share it. Um, Thank you so much. Yin, uh, Kim, you also need to say one last thing, right, about tonight. Okay, great. Well, hello, everyone. I hope you're doing fine and that you're enjoying Barcelona. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that today uh, the lecture uh, will happen at 7. It's a lecture that I will be doing myself with resonance of things and people. And, um, and you will just get, like, a YouTube link um, a bit before 7 on your email because the YouTube link that you got is the wrong one. Um, and I'm inviting everyone to watch it from YouTube uh, because it's not gonna be on Zoom. Um, it's just gonna be in YouTube. Um, I, I hope that's clear. You will just get an email a few minutes before. Thank you for that. I want to I want to say thank you to you, Monica, <laughs> for leading us through these two hours debate, open conversation, <laughs> and thanks to to give us a little bit of light the last days to sort it out with all this debate. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank it's you. It's been a pleasure to collaborate with you as well. To be continued. <laughs>
Ciao, everyone. Thank you so much. And um, we look forward to being with you, Kim, later and being back together again. Have a nice lunch and afternoon, everyone. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.